the number one way to collect feedback and information about what your customers want, need, and like is using surveys. And this isn't just for your customers. This could be for your students. This could be for your fans, your followers, your patients, your anybody who you want to ask, your family members. You could ask them what they want for Thanksgiving. Anything you want, you can ask with a survey. And an online survey is the best way to do that online. It's easy, convenient, quick. And Survey Sparrow, the app we're going to look at today, makes your surveys highly engaging and a lot of fun to fill out. Before we build a survey from front to back, let me just say it is GDPR compliant, which is important to a lot of you guys. And there are a lot of templates already pre-made. I'm just going to click on more down here under popular templates. We can see a huge list of templates. You can filter them by category, or you can scroll through and look at each one. And you can click on any one you want. And there's a sample you can work through. You can fill out the survey right here. You can see how it looks on various devices. Survey Sparrow is built with mobile first in mind. So everything works on mobile. Everything is seamless on mobile. And the surveys are very engaging. And they look great, which is also very engaging. And we're going to build one from front to back in just a minute. But first, let me say, my name is Bjorn Alpass from WP Learning Lab. We will help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your customers. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get back to Survey Sparrow. If we head over to the pricing page, we see that there is a free account you can sign up for, a bunch of paid accounts as well. But you can get a free account. This affords you 100 responses per month, which is a lot. It's more than enough for most people. And a 10 question survey, that's a good number, even less than that, fewer questions than that, is a good number to get quick information from your customers or your audience and help you guide how you're creating your products and services. So to get to this page to get your free account, just click on the link in the description down below, click on pricing, and then sign up for the free account. It's a short form, just name, email address, and phone number, which is skippable. And you don't even need to enter your credit card for your free account. So you can just sign up, get a free account, and see how it all works. I'm going to log into the account that I have, which we see here. I've got one demo survey built. I'm going to click on New Survey. We're going to get right into the action right away. There are four different types of survey. The classic survey, where you have one question per page. The person clicks Next, and then the next question comes. Or you can also set it so when they click an Answer, the next question just scrolls up. You have a chat survey where it's like a chat. Much more engaging. You can add GIFs, you can add images, you can add icons. It's a great looking survey. This is the type that we're going to create in this tutorial because it's highly engaging. And we're going to put it on my website as well and share it so we can get some actual feedback and see responses. You can have an MPS survey, which helps you measure your customer loyalty and helps you grow your business. You can also have an offline survey. Say you're at a booth at a conference and you have your iPad, but you don't have an internet connection. You can use this survey option to have people fill out your survey offline and collect the data right on your iPad and then sync it to your Service Bearer account once you're back on the internet. That's a pretty cool option. I'm going to choose Chat Survey because that's the one we're doing today. I'm going to click on Browse Chat Templates. We're going to build it from scratch, but I just want to show you some templates and how easy they are. Let's choose Customer Satisfaction, Chat Survey, and this is the template. This is basically how the server would look on a full screen. Normally, this isn't done on a full screen. This is how it would look on a full screen. So there's questions that are asked. You click on the answer. How would you rate the quality of the product? You give some stars. And it's like a chat. It's like, it's like you're chatting with someone. And you can have conditional logic. So depending on which number they choose or which range of numbers they choose, you can have different answers for different questions. You can branch all day long. Have a really complex branching survey if you want, or just a really simple survey to collect feedback. Down the bottom right-hand corner, it shows how much of the survey is completed and how much is left. That's always nice for people to see because people don't want to spend all day filling out surveys. So they want it to go pretty quick. Just giving bogus answers here. And then we submit when we're done and it says, thank you for your time and the survey is complete. If you like this template, click on choose template and that'll be auto filled and you can edit it. We're going to create one from scratch. So I'm going to back out of here. I'm going to click new survey, chat survey, start blank. I'm going to call this WordPress survey, because that's what it's going to be. It's going to keep in the general folder. And I'll click Next. And this is our blank canvas. Everything is auto-saved. We see up here in the top right, it's currently saved. And we add a new question. I'm going to start with a welcome page. We see changes are made. It's saving. Now it's saved again. And I'm going to say, and for the text, I'm going to say, hi there. Do you have a minute to answer a few questions? And I want to make this engaging. So I'm going to add some media. I'm going to click right here. 
and we can get images from Unsplash, which are royalty free. You can scroll through, you can search, you can search for cars, say it's a survey, say you have a car website or a mechanic website or something. You can have a survey about cars, have a car image. You can upload your own from your computer and you can use a GIF. I'm going to use a GIF for hello, see if there's something cool. A lot of options. This one's a little scary, not going to use that one. Uh, I like this one. Max from Goof Troop. I know who that is because my kids watch on Disney Plus. And I used to know when I was a kid, but I forgot until recently. So this is what the question will be. Hey there, do you have a minute to answer a few questions? Max will show up and there will be a button down below. The button currently says sure ask. I'm just going to change this to sure smiley face. Welcome screen is done. I'm going to add our first question. These are our question options. We can have an opinion scale. And when you hover over it, there's an example on the right. Multiple choice, rating, text entry field, email. You can have a section with multiple questions. You can have picture choices. So you choose pictures or icons or things you upload to the site. They can choose yes or no questions. Number questions, so the answers have to be numbers. You can have a message, which is just you making a message, not really a question. You can have an upload box where your survey respondents can upload something and a date field and a thank you page which we'll add at the end. I'm going to start with text and I'm going to make this question, may I ask your name? Then they'll fill in their name. We're going to make this required because the rest of the survey will require that because we're going to use their name in the survey to make it more personalized. We chose text input for the survey option. If you wanted to change it midstream, you can click on here and it has all the options for you here. So you can change the question type. I'm just going to click on text to keep it as text. We have these options for a text question. Every question type will have different options. You also have logic, meaning you can display certain questions based on previous responses and you can skip questions based on previous responses. We're not going to get into that just yet, but every question has this logic. So that's all we have. May I ask your name? Add next question. Next one is going to be a message. And the message will say, nice to e-meet you. And we're going to personalize this. Right here, I want to put their name, which is their answer to the previous question. On the right-hand side, we have the ability to add variables by clicking on this dollar sign. So we can choose contact details if they are a contact in the database in ServiceBarrow. We'll get to that later. In this case, they're not. So we're going to scroll down. And we're going to choose an answer to. Answer to question one, may I ask your name? So the answer to that question is going to be what is filled in right at this location. So we have nice to eat, meet you, so-and-so, whatever their name is. And we have the option to choose a delay on how long it takes to show this. Because this is a chat template or a chat survey, it looks like a chat between two people, between the survey respondent and between me, the person asking the questions. So you can have the text and the questions and the messages display immediately, or you can have a delay to make it look more like a chat. I think a delay of one second is nice. Add next question. This next question is going to be the, the real start of the survey. I'm going to make it multiple choice. And the question will be, what is the biggest problem you have with WordPress right now? Let's enter multiple choices. Building my first website. It's a common problem. Security site speed, finding a good host, uh, and some people don't have any problems. So I'm just going to say no problems for those people. And others might want to enter other because this can't possibly be all the, the problems people could be having with WordPress. So I'm going to choose allow other option right here. Now we have an other. And I'm also going to choose randomize on the left hand side. This will make it so that these answers are mixed up. And the reason you want to do that is because when people take surveys, when large numbers of people take surveys, there is a bias to pick the first answer. For whatever reason, it's the first one people read and they say, oh yeah, that could be me. They just choose it. They don't read through the rest. They don't choose the rest. Some do, most do, but there is a bias towards the first choice being the answer they pick. And by randomizing, you take away that bias a little bit. You can also choose multiple answers. So people will be able to choose more than one. In my case, I'm asking what is the biggest problem? I'm not asking what are the biggest two or three problems, what's the biggest problem? So I don't want to have that on, but you can have that. You can also limit how many they can choose using this drop down here. I'm just going to turn this one off and we're going to make this required. 
can also make this a scorable question so people can have scores which can then be added up. So you could build something like uh, which superhero would you be if you were in the Marvel Universe? That kind of survey, which are popular on places like Instagram. So you could use scores to ask questions and then they, based on the scores, they're a certain superhero. I'm going to add next question because this one is complete. Next one is going to be a message. Just thanking them for answering that question. Thanks for letting me know. Your responses will help me make better content and tutorials for you. That's so friendly. After one second, that'll show up. Add next question. This one will be multiple choice again. If you use a page builder, which one do you prefer? Elementor, I'm just going to fill in the usual suspects here. Brizzy, Beaver Builder, Oxygen. I don't want to type them all out, so now I'm going to choose other and delete this blank one. And I'm going to randomize. So we don't have the bias where they pick the first question. I'm going to make these stacked as well. Stacked shows in a vertical stack, unstacked doesn't. You'll notice in the previous question, what's the biggest problem you're facing? It stacked them automatically because my answers were so long. So if I were to shorten this, we go to the unstacked version, which works on mobile. But if the question is too long or the answer is too long, this would no longer work well on mobile. And so we're forced into the stacked option because Service Sparrow is mobile first. So it does a lot of the optimization for you. You don't have to even think about it or worry about it. So now we have our page builder question. We want to make this required because this is useful information for me for making content. If people choose one of these more, way more than the others, then maybe I should make more content about that page builder. I'm not going to allow multiple answers and I'm going to click on next question. I'm going to choose multiple choice again. And this question is a bit longer. First, we say, great, we're almost done in response to the previous question they answered, kind of a response. I'm going to ask, would you find it useful if I held weekly office hours where I teach something live and you can log on and ask questions about the day's topic or anything WordPress related? And I'll answer your questions on the call. Or if there's enough time on the call to answer all the questions, I'll answer them via email after the call. This is a service I'm thinking about creating and I'm going to ask people whether that is something that they want to do, which is smart. Before I invest the time and the effort creating it and having it flop, I'm going to ask whether it's something people actually want. So we're going to have very simple choices here. Yes, that would be useful. And no, that's not for me. Both are very valid answers. Going to make that required. I can choose any options down here. Going to click on add next question. And the next two questions will appear or not appear based on logic because I want a different question if they say yes and a different question if they say no. So we're going to add new, going to choose multiple choice again, going to say cool. If there's a monthly fee associated with getting all your WordPress questions answered live or via email, what would that be worth to you? Just going to um, enter some options here. $10 a month. I'm going to add, I think, five options. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I'll make this randomized and not going to allow multiple. And I'm not going to, oh, sure, I'll put other on there. And then I'll click on logic. And I'm going to choose display logic. And I'm going to choose if question. We can also have logic based on contact and channel. I'm going to choose if question number four. And the respondent selected, yes, that would be useful. So if someone says, yes, those office hours will be useful, then I ask, cool. If I was to charge a monthly fee for that, what would be something you'd be willing to pay? And of course, they can enter zero for other or enter $100 a month for other. Depends on the person, really. And this next question is going to be a text field. And it is going to be the response I give if they choose no, the office hours is not for me. I'm going to say thanks for your feedback. Is there a different WordPress related service that you would find useful? They can enter it here. I'm going to choose multiple lines to allow them to add multiple lines if they want to. Under logic, display logic, choose or if question is number four. And the answer they select is no, then we'll choose this question. We'll make that required. And that's the end of our short little survey. I'm going to add the thank you screen now down here. Thank you page. 
I'm going to say for the thank you message, thank you for your time. Your feedback will be very helpful. I'm going to add their name in here as a variable, just like we did earlier. Now you can see we can choose, because we have more questions now, we can choose the answers to any question we want as the variable if we wanted to. May I ask your name? The answer to that question will be their name as input here. So where I made this conditional logic here, if they chose yes, I will know that here. So I could say something like, in the previous question, you chose yes, that would be for me. If there's a fee associated with that, then it kind of gives context to the question. So if you want to make your survey even more understandable, more clear, also more wordy, maybe you'd want to do that. That's definitely an option you have. I'm going to choose an image. I'm going to see if I can find a clock or something because we are talking about time. Thank you for your time. It's a clock. It's very witty. I'm not going to add a description. I'll add a social share in case people want to share it. I will turn off the branding for Survey Sparrow, and you can also redirect. So instead of having this thank you page where there's a thank you message, you can redirect to a thank you page on your website. I'm going to keep it as this in the survey, and now our survey is more or less complete. Let's run through it and see how it works. Click on Preview in the top right. We see here, do you have a minute to answer a few questions? Sure. May I ask your name? Bjorn. Nice to meet you, Bjorn. What's the biggest problem you have with WordPress right now? I'm going to say site speed. Thanks for letting me know. Da, 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 da. Which page builder do you use? Elementor. Great, almost done. Yes, that'd be super useful. Office hours, awesome. I would pay 20 bucks a month. That'd be great. And then that's it. And down here we click submit. And that submits the survey. It says, thank you for your time. Your feedback's very helpful. And that's a very engaging survey, if you ask me. Very engaging, simple, clean, effective, very nice. So now we have the steps up here. So we built the survey. And now step two is we can integrate the survey. We don't have to do anything in here, but we have the option to. We can integrate with all these platforms. These are integrations built right in in-house at Service Barrel. You can also use webhooks where you can integrate with Zapier if you wanted. I'm not going to integrate with any of these right now. Under share, we have all the ways that we can share this survey with people. We can send an email. We can create a URL that we can put pretty much anywhere. You can put URLs. We can share on Facebook or Twitter. We can embed. We can email embed. We can send via text message and via QR code. And we're going to do a handful of these. We're going to create a URL. And this one I'm going to call uh, YouTube Stories. And I'll share it in the YouTube Stories section so someone fills it out there. I'm going to copy the URL. I'm going to go over to my YouTube Stories here. I don't post very many of these, so I don't know how many responses we'll get through here, but we're going to see. It says, I'm making a tutorial about a cool new survey app. Can you fill out this quick survey so that we can see some data for the tutorial? Your feedback will also help me make better tutorials for you. Here is the link. So I'm going to post this and I'm going to see what happens. Let's carry on with sharing in other places and let's, let's see what happens. Like I say, let's see what happens. I'm going to call this one Facebook group. Share the link again. I'm going to put it in the Facebook group. Copy that. And I'm just going to use the same message that we have here, just a different URL. So put that in there, and if I could copy this, that'd be great. There we go. Copy that. Here is the link. I'm not going to add an image. It would get more responsive probably if I add an image in here, but I don't have one created at the moment. So I think that this should be good enough. Let's add some spacing in here, make it a little more readable, and then click on Post. And then not only post, I'm going to make it the announcement so people see it. Mark as announcement. There. Now we'll see what this generates. By the way, if you're not in the Facebook group yet, make sure you join. A lot of WordPress help and WordPress learning going on here. Currently, there are 4,200 members and growing quickly. So make sure you join. No reason not to. It's free. You just got to say, I want to join, fill in three questions, and then you're in. Super simple. All right. So we shared on Facebook, shared on YouTube. Let's share this on the website. Let's embed it on the website, actually. Let's click on Embed and see what embed options we have. We have three options. So there's a pop-up card, which it shows a little preview down on the bottom here. Here's the full website. Here's the pop-up down here. There's the chat, full website, chat icon. 
that they click on, then it appears. And there's the inline embed, which allows you to put the survey right into the content. So this is a content here. This would be the survey, content below, or you put it in the sidebar of your site or something like that. I'm gonna choose the pop-up card because I think max waving here is very engaging. So this is how we'll do it. Let's put this on the WP Learning Lab website. So let's call it that. And you can choose the position. You can start with the first question. You can show a profile picture. I currently don't have a profile picture set, so it just shows as nothing, but we are going to add one. So let's keep all the other options as they are. Let's use the short code. Let's copy the short code. And now we have to go into the website. I'm gonna put it into an Elementor template, one that appears on every page. So let's go to Elementor templates, theme builder. I'm gonna put it in the footer. So it's more out of the way. Website footer template, edit with Elementor. I'm gonna choose or search for the short code field. I'm just gonna put it right there and click apply. And now our short code appears like this on the website. That's not how we like it. Let's click on update. Let's go to the website, see how that looks. It's not gonna be how we want it yet because there's one more thing we have to do. I recommend you do it first, not in the order I did it. So we have the short code down here that is just a short code, not cool. So we need to go into our plugins and add a new plugin. Let's go to exit the dashboard, plugins and add new, look up survey Sparrow, and now we're gonna install. As you can see, it's a new plugin. Not many installs yet, but that'll be coming. More installs will be coming. Just install this plugin. Whenever you're installing new plugins, you might wanna back up your site. I have my backups automated and scheduled using this tutorial up here. So if you wanna do that as well, check out that tutorial. Click on activate once you have the plugin installed. And now if I come back out to the site, and I will refresh, and hopefully we'll have our Survey Sparrow widget enabled. So there it is, there you have it. As you scroll around, we have our survey right here. I'm just gonna add my image for the, the placeholder image. I'm gonna click on save. If something goes wrong while you're doing that, so it doesn't appear how you want it to, double check your settings, make sure you click save at the bottom. While clicking save, it won't work right. So. Now we've embedded it in various places and shared it. The results page doesn't have anything yet. Check the results later. I'm gonna click on my user profile area, which is just my first two letters of my first name right here. Upload image, and I will upload this one. This one I've been using a lot lately. Make sure we're centered on my goofy grin. Click on upload, and then click on update. And now if I come back out to the site and refresh, hopefully this little icon will be updated so it shows as me. And there I am. And now we can fill out the survey right on the website. Let's zoom in a little bit, make it bigger. So this is exactly what we saw earlier, just in the website context. Ask if someone wants to fill it out, sure. May I ask your name? Bjorn, nice to e-meet you. Next. What's your biggest problem with WordPress right now? We have some arrows for extra options if we need them. We can just also scroll. And my biggest problem is security. Thanks for letting me know. You're responsible to help me make better content for your and tutorials for you. Next, if you use Page Builder, which one do you prefer? Elementor, you saw this earlier. This time I'm gonna choose no. Earlier I chose yes for this. This time I'm gonna choose no. We see we have a different question. This is the logic happening. Is there a different WordPress related service you'd find useful? Uh, do it for me. That will be very useful. I don't want to do it. You do it for me. And thank you for your feedback. Done. And that's how quick a survey is. That's how quickly it goes. And that same or a similar survey is what they'll be seeing when they go to Facebook. So let's just go to the share settings. Actually, let's go back to Facebook. Go back to the Facebook group. And let's just click on the survey link and see what it looks like. Full screen survey. There we go, super simple. And this is the same survey we just saw. I'm not gonna do it over and over, you get the idea. So now we've shared it in various places. We've got two responses already. One of them is me. Let's see if we refresh this or the more. No, nope, one's me. And we're just gonna wait until some more arrive. Then we're gonna look at the results and look at the graphs and charts that you can see in the account. While we're waiting, let's look at some more options. We have a customer pulse section, which is where you can add surveys and invite colleagues to work on them. 
employee pulse. This is basically the types of surveys you're creating. And this list up here is all surveys and general. When we first built the survey or created the survey, it asked us which folder to put it into. When we chose general, you could also put it into these other folders. You can trash these folders if you don't want them. You can make your own custom folders, also called workspaces. You can invite colleagues. And under the audience tab, we see who's given their email address. I don't have an email address question in that survey, so I'm the only one. So the other person who filled the survey recently, they don't show up here. But if you had an email option in, in the survey, then they would show up here. And if we go back to our survey, let's edit this one. Let's go to integrate. We see a Weber is integrated. So you can add, you can collect email addresses in the survey, add them right to a Weber. Or you can use webhooks, add them to Zapier, which adds them to any number of different autoresponders that Zapier integrates with. So you can add people right to email lists, specific email lists based on their answers. We have a billing section where it goes through all the billing stuff. There's a general branding for your account so you can change the colors very easily. You notice the colors that we have. Let's see if we refresh, see if this shows up again. Nope, that's good. Anyway, we have the colors here, dark green, light green. We can change those colors right here. So primary color, can make that blue because that's my primary color. Secondary color, I'll make it something where you can see it's different, like a dark green. Click on update. Now if I refresh, we see our colors are updated. And that applies to all your surveys everywhere. And the green is what applied here. So we see the text is now dark green. The background is a lighter green. This part is the dark blue that we chose. And this area is a lighter blue. So it bases uh, shades of the colors based on what you chose here. Sub accounts allows you to create sub accounts, say for clients, things like that. Single sign on for security. All these things I have to upgrade for users. You can add new users. You can segment users into teams. You can create new teams. You can have a whole bunch of people working on these surveys. Device management, this option is required for the offline surveys. And you set up your devices here, and then you can sync the data back into the account once you're back online. Email settings and domain settings, apps and integrations, languages. You can choose different languages, three, four, uh, five. I can count English, German, Spanish, Dutch, and Czech. And you can also translate to your own custom language by translating these options down here. So send a copy of a response to themselves, and this is the text that you'd enter for that option. So it describes what the option is, and this would be the translation of it. And billing, we saw earlier, is the billing section. And that is Survey Sparrow in a nutshell. I'm going to stop the video to collect more responses. And once we have some more, we're going to come back and look at the reporting. Before I pause it, let's check out the pricing options that we have available because they're quite reasonably priced. Free down here is quite reasonable. And if you need more survey responses, you can have up to 1,000 responses, unlimited questions, display logic scoring share via email, social, web URL, widget, QR code for 19 bucks a month. That's not unreasonable because the data, if you formulate your questions properly and your answers properly, the data you collect is powerful. It's very useful information. And I actually have a book that is under my desk right now. Let me grab it. This book right here, it's called Ask. This is a great book to help you figure out which survey questions you should create and what surveys you should create to collect data you need to create services for your business. Um, this book I got on Amazon a long time ago. It's still there on Amazon. So check out this book if you're not sure what kind of service to create or how to create them. It's a super useful book. As you upgrade to bigger accounts, you could do more things with your account. More responses for the premium, plus recurring surveys. Like say I did end up doing that weekly office hours, I can have a recurring survey that goes out every week that asks, how do we do? Was it good? Was it bad? What can I change? Recurring service can be very handy. You can also send out reminder emails. So if you send an email or, or a survey to someone and they don't complete it, you can send a reminder to them. You can accept payments. You can schedule reports. Business level. You can have white labeling, Salesforce integration, HubSpot integration, 100,000 emails, two offline devices, two users included, and on and on. More and more, you get the idea. 
under NPS or Net Promoter Score. You see all the options that you have there. If you want only offline surveys, you can do that here. You can buy an audience right through them. You can use agency plans if you want, and you can also pay annually or quarterly. Prices obviously change. The annual price is what you see here. Quarterly is what you see here. So you have 35% by going annual. And click on this link here, and you see all the features side-by-side -side comparison. So if you are at all interested in creating surveys and using this app to do them, check out the link in the description down below and check out Survey Sparrow. It's a great app. And now I'm going to pause this video. And when I come back, we're going to have some results to look at so we can see the reports that you can see inside of Survey Sparrow. So it's been about 15 minutes. We've got four responses. This is enough to look at some data. If we go to Actions, click on View Results. We see our data. So the first question may ask your name. And we have a list of names. Someone named Magic filled in the survey as well. And this one was me, so I guess I got three responses. One of them is me. And then each question will have a bar graph or data like this, depending on what type of question it is, to show you what the responses are. So site speed, uh, sorry, security appears to be the most prominent problem right now. Which page ability do you use? Elementor, number one. This sample size is obviously not very big. You need a bigger sample size to make any decisions, but at least there's some data starting to roll in. So yes, that'd be useful for our office hours. Two people said $10, one person said 20. And why is there a discrepancy? It's because this question, four people answered it, but depending on your answer, you either get question five or question six. This might be more useful if this was something like question 4A or question 4B, because then you know that they're tied together. But we have these questions appear based on the answer they chose for question four. So we have three people who chose yes, that's useful. So three people answered question five. And then one person said, no, it's not for me. And then one question answered number six. And we can also look at our responses over here. We see them in itemized list form. We can also create filters to pick out specific data we want to see. We can also compare and understand the correlation between survey questions using this option here. But I wouldn't use the compare of the filters until we have some more data because four people answering your survey is not enough to make any kind of decision. So you want to make sure you have a statistically significant amount of question answers and sample size before you make any decisions and before you do any real analysis on your survey. Once you've created a few surveys and collected feedback from your audience, you'll see how immensely powerful they are. And next up is watching this playlist over here where I show you how to use Elementor to do pretty much anything on your website because Elementor is also immensely powerful. So check out that playlist and click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.